The School of Hard Knocks 25 took place at the Cypress Center in Medicine Hat. Professional and amateur fighters from across Canada battled it out in the Hard Knocks cage. Yeah! 
This call will be contested under professional rule. The referee in charge of the hard knocks action is Mr. Mark Aparicio. Mark Aparicio back in charge of the Hard Knocks cage as Adam Imhoff in the red corner but blue trunks takes on the blue corner black trunks of Chad and Helliger and we are underway for our co-main event of the evening. Good explosive kick to start it off by Adam Imhoff. Again, Imhoff uh, counting on his experience to be a factor here with 19 MMA fights between his amateur and pro career thus far. Off, well, and you can see the dynamic striking here by both these guys in and out. And uh, we mentioned it before where a kick should be as fast out as it is back in. Nice strikes here by an Helliger and a good takedown by Adam Imhoff. And Helliger's coach is screaming at him to get up off the ground knowing that he is a a very good striker, Imhoff, doing a good job of getting in Helliger to the ground and limiting that potential for damage. Yeah, and you can see the welt from that first kick on the leg of Van Helliger. Screaming for the arm bar is his coach and trying to get in, and he's almost got that leg underneath. Uh, again, not much happening here. The official pulling the toes out. It's very similar to the fingers. It's just for risk's sake. Big swing by Adam Imhoff. And Imhoff continuing to work on top and now scrambling a nice reversal there from Chad and Helliger to, to roll into a dominant position. That's some great jujitsu there by Ann Helliger. He caught his opponent with a balance, was able to come all the way through and uh, now looking to use his own strikes from the top here. Three minutes, 20 seconds left. Nice balls being landed by Ann Helliger. I'm off in a little bit of trouble here as Ann An Helliger pinned his one arm and is able to land, uh, he, I want to say he's landed 10 or 12 punches uh, straight to the face of Imhoff, who's still gamely defending Jeremy, but is in a lot of trouble here in this position. Well, and the, I think the good thing for Imhoff is it's the left hand that's free and not the right hand. Yes, the left hand's doing damage, but we know all about the right hand of Chad and Helliger. Again, those punches not coming with a lot of power on them necessarily. Uh, and there's the right hand. And now both fists uh, being thrown by Ann Helliger. And Imhoff's in some serious trouble here with two and a half minutes left. Mark Aparicio right on top of the, the action. Doesn't jump in yet, though. And uh, I'm now he's imploring Imhoff to defend himself. Imhoff saying he's, he's fine, he's doing all right. And uh, uh, again, a nice elbow there from Ann Helliger. And it looks like he might be trying to find an arm bar there, using the punches to soften him up. More blows now unanswered to the side of Imhoff head. And, and the referee right on top of the action. Elbows now coming, and this fight is over. Chad and Helliger works a ground and pound victory over Adam Imhoff. And Imhoff not happy about the decision, shaking his head, saying it shouldn't have been stopped. But for my money, and Helliger had been raining unanswered blows for a good minute and a half, Jeremy. It looks like it's in, so we're gonna go to Jay Dance, who's in the center of the cage. We have the official decision. Brought to you by Braun and Body. The winner by TKO at two minutes and 52 seconds in the very first round in the blue corner, Chad and Helliger. Chad and Helliger pushes record to two and two with a dominant performance. Chad, Excuse me, Brian. Anyone who watches the tape of your first two fights is not going to expect the fighter that you've become. What's made the difference for you in, uh, as, a, as a fighter? I've just been putting it all together now, finally in the cage. I've been putting it together in the gym for a long time. It's good to start getting some success and keep working at it. I got a great team, Max Marin, Knuckles MMA. Did you expect the, the fight to go as long as it did? Because it seemed like you had him down and we're, and we're punching unanswered blows for about a minute and a half before the referee got in there. Uh, at any point, were you getting frustrated that it wasn't over yet? No, man, he's crazy tough. Like, I didn't know if he was taking him and, and was waiting to sweep, so I was worried about my base, but I just kept going. I knew the ref was coming close. I won't get tired. And walk us through the finish here. Uh, I just got good position, felt heavy hips pushing on him, and uh, I felt his legs start to go out. I know he cut a bit more weight than me. Wanted to keep the pressure on him. I keep hitting him, even if I'm not hitting him hardest. Start setting up the big shots and put him away. 
Now, you've already thanked your coaches. Anything else, anybody else you'd like to thank? Yeah, for sure. Of course, the whole Knuckles team, everybody that came out to help me. My friends and family, my brother Kyle Reese, sister Jenna, girlfriend Megan, everybody helped out, worked hard for this. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it one more time for your winner, Chad and Helliger. To find out more about Hard Knocks Fighting and upcoming Hard Knocks events, please visit hardknockfighting.com. This school of Hard Knocks Fight is a professional bout in the 147 pound division and is brought to you by Days Off Pub and D&D Oil Field Services. And now, let's meet the fighters. She's fighting out of Chicago, Illinois. This is Adrian Sieber. Sieber comes to us out of Chicago, Illinois, a 15-year veteran of the Chicago Police Force and uh, a very, uh, a very well-rounded fighter. In, in watching some of her fight videos, uh, a, a very solid, uh, a heavy-handed puncher and uh, a very solid ground game, despite her one and two records. Well, she has a black belt in Taekwondo, and uh, she followed uh, followed that training with some jiu-jitsu training, had a few boxing matches. Like, this is someone who's trained all different kind of, of martial arts and has that kind of mixed martial arts feel, that, that well-rounded go. She lost her last fight by decision at Bellator. Uh, and again, one and two, although fighting very difficult opponents. And this is the thing with the women's divisions, is that there are very difficult opponents and the level of, of competition has, has grown so much in a very short time. Yeah, in that last fight at Bellator, she found herself with a broken orbital bone in the second round and then finished the third round and, and made it through to that decision but was unable to see out of that one eye and as a result uh, found herself on the losing end of that decision. But uh, again, Adrian Sieber, uh, some, very, uh, some very extensive fighting background, started training MMA as a defense mechanism to help her uh, as a police officer. to the cage out of Regina, Saskatchewan, and cheeky training comes in one and two. But again, remember, one of those losses to Ronda Rousey, the current Strike Force champion in her weight class, coming down with one of the Rig Pig Apparel hard hats. Uh, and uh, Rig Pig, of course, one of our uh, major sponsors here in the Hard Knocks Fighting Championship. And uh, Charmaine, of course, honoring the Rig Pig sponsors by wearing the hard hat on her way down to the cage. Yeah, Char Charmaine Tweet, uh, she was she was with her original gym and then decided to change gyms to the Cheeky Training System. And she says that that has been the biggest difference in her career is when she trained and, and, and switched training and said that where I'm training isn't good enough, I need uh, a higher caliber of system. So that's where she went to. Uh, she knows that uh, her opponent, Adrian Seaver, is a Chicago police officer and knows that she is very tough. Uh, you can't be a police officer, especially in Chicago, without being tough. And uh, so it could be a question of who's going to be the better fighter tonight. Charmaine Tweet going into the center of the cage. Jake and Ann's having to uh, get out of the way there quickly as uh, Charmaine uh, honors uh, the coaching, of course, uh, a heavy Muay Thai background for Charmaine and uh, has won several Muay Thai championships and is hoping to put that ability on display tonight. And now, the official Hard Rocks fighter introductions. In the rich pick apparel blue corner, she is one and two as a professional, 40 years old and stands five feet, eight inches tall. She weighed in at 145 pounds, fighting out of Academy of Self-Defense, from Chicago, please welcome Hard Knocks fighter, Adrian Seeger! In the Ralph's 
Texas Bar and Steakhouse Red Corner. She's one and two as a professional, 35 years old, and stands six feet tall. She weighs in at 146 pounds, fighting out of cheeky training. The intimidating stare down there uh, from both fighters, uh, not one that, that you're going to see any self-doubt in either one of these fighters as they get prepped for our main event of the evening, three of five-minute rounds as Adrian Sieber in the black trunks out of the blue corner takes on the red trunks of Charmaine Tweet out of the red corner. And Tweet cutting the cage off early and trying to get Sieber up against the fence as both exchange a kick. Well, and Charmaine Tweet has that long reach and height advantage and that Muay Thai background, which she's going to hope to use to keep the range going. Uh, both fighters feel comfortable on the ground, but uh, you look at uh, Charmaine Tweet's uh, extensive Muay Thai background, and she's not going to want to give up that, uh, that advantage. Continuing to throw those leg kicks, a big front kick. And that one, a front kick for Charmaine, almost to the chin of Adrian. So uh, gives you a little bit of an idea on the height difference between these two women. And a nice leg catch and a takedown by Adrian Sieber. And now we'll see uh, the ground game of both these fighters. And a good guard there by Charmaine Tweet. Well, and Charmaine spending every day wrestling with Chi Chi Gonzalez, and uh, anybody who saw him fight in Estevan knows exactly how good that ground game can be. May have had an arm there, but ended up uh, having to uh, slide back into the guard as Adrian Sieber uh, did a good job of defending that, having the arm up there, coming across with a big elbow thrown there by Charmaine. Yeah, and uh, you hear be active coming out of the, the coach's corner of Charmaine Tweet, and active as, she, as she's being, continuing to shrimp and move backwards, trying to get a position in which she can land. Uh, Adrian Sieber not doing much in the top position except defend. There's a nice pass, and this is maybe where she can get to work, uh, perhaps dropping some elbows there. A knee into the side of Charmaine Tweet. And again, like you mentioned, Jeremy, it'll be Adrian Sieber trying to find a position here and uh, is trying to pass and almost has the full mount, now does have the full mount and is on top of Charmaine Tweet. We'll see if she can do anything from here as she's got the mount and almost three full minutes to work with it. Yeah, and you look on the, uh, on the left leg of Adrian Sieber and there's a big red mark from a kick there. So. Uh, you can see the effectiveness of the of the kicking of Charmaine Tweet. Now that she's got her head up against the cage, she's going to want to push to be able to get her back up and be able to stand up. But uh, good punches being landed here by Adrian Sieber. Sieber continuing to work on top, and as we've seen all night, the dominant position really works for the judges' favor. Charmaine Tweet may have been landing the primary strikes earlier when she had her in the guard. However, since she's got into the mount and doing a good job of keeping her in the mount, Adrian Sieber has landed the better of the exchanges here. And trying to come through is Charmaine Tweet, unable to do so. Good center of balance there by Sieber, and you can see Big punch landed there, made the space, and Adrian Sieber caught uh, Charmaine Tweet flat on the face. Right in front of us up here at cage side and trying to, to spring her back when she felt like Sieber's hips had maybe gotten too high. Charmaine Tweet trying to spring out, but unable to do so and gets a couple punches for her trouble. 
Well, and the thing with female fighters is they have extra flexibility compared to men, so you'll see uh, positions that you might not see in the male ranks, and you see how flexible Charmaine Tweed is to be able to reach her legs all the way back. Now she's looking to be able to counter, gets out of a dangerous position. Big shots being landed, though, by Adrian Sieber. And Sieber dropping a big elbow a moment ago, missing with this one here as she continues to drop punches, and Charmaine Tweed trying to use her legs to try and uh, stop the arms of Adrian Sieber, but unable to do so. Sieber will pop up, land a couple punches, and then get back into this tight position. Now we've got an arm triangle possibility here uh, from the top as Sieber may be trying to put the choke on, but is unable to do so. It didn't had the she neck had the crank a bit, uh, but uh, uh, so far so good for Adrian Sieber here in round number one with 45 seconds to go. Spent the bulk of round one on top now, and maybe just looking for a submission there and uh, trying to pull out the arm of a Charmaine Tweet and, and get in there and, and secure a submission. But so far, so good for Adrian Sieber here in round number one. And doing a good job staying in good position. These aren't necessarily landing clean, but they are landing and doing damage, and they are landing in the eyes of the judges. Uh, again, you, you see the flexibility here by Charmaine Tweet trying to uh, stop those arms with her legs. Uh, and we're down here to 10 seconds left on our feature fights clock. And you hear the clap there. <laughs> I think Adrian Sieber thought that was the end of the round. She, yeah. she got up for a moment and stopped and uh, tried to pull the arm bar, was unable to secure it. So Charmaine Tweet finds herself on the bottom for most of round number one. Adrian Sieber, a very impressive performance here in round number one. And now we're gonna see where Cardio Cup plays in, into it because we're through first round here and uh, we do know that in a standing position, Charmaine Tweet has a decided advantage. Uh, you can see the welts on the legs of Adrian Sieber and uh, Sieber was quite effective once she was on the ground. You see some of the shots being landed here and again that unique defense of trying to put the legs back to stop the arms but all these shots landing, doing damage, and uh, here's the attempt at the armbar. Yeah, that's the uh, very end of round one, and you gotta think if she had maybe tried that 45 or a minute earlier, then, uh, then she might have ended up successful, but uh, trying it with just five seconds left in round number one. Maybe trying to catch Charmaine unawares uh, as, as the round wound down, but uh, unable to do so. And now Adrian Sieber will come out and try and improve on that round one performance. Charmaine Tweet, uh, as, uh, I think, has got to keep this fight on her feet uh, to, to retain that reach and striking advantage. Underway round number two, the fighters touch gloves and they are back at it. She's circling to left, she's circling left, heavy feet, heavy feet. Strike with her, yes, stay with her. She's heavy Both feet. fighters throwing big leg kicks. Another good leg kick there by Charmaine Tweet. In talking to Char's coaches before the fight, they said they expected Adrian to come in, try and take her down and work ground and pound, and that's exactly what she did in round number one. And we'll see what they told her between rounds to see what they're able to uh, able to do here in round number two. Well, the most important thing is when she has those big leg kicks, she has to bring her leg back immediately to be able to take that catch. Nice leg kick there. And here rushing in, a bull rush up against the fence is Adrian Sieber pushing Charmaine Tweet there, and Charmaine looking to counter, and possibly has that standing guillotine, but it doesn't look like it's in very tight. And here you end up with Adrian Sieber on top with a ton of time. Well, I, minutes, 52 up, seconds. I certainly don't think Charmaine Tweet tried to, to drop in with the guillotine there. She secured the head, but it was a nice takedown from Adrian Sieber as she, she caved in the back of that one knee and, and secured the takedown like you were mentioning earlier, Jeremy, the old school wrestling style of, of put one hand behind the knee, buckle the knee, and that means that your opponent's gonna go down. And that's what Sieber did there. And again, winds up on top, and she was very effective in round number one. We'll see what she can do here in round number two if she can pass and, and regain that mounted position. Striking from the bottom is Charmaine Tweet, but again, we talk about being on the bottom. You don't want to be there. It looks bad in the eyes of the judges. Nice knee landed by Adrian Sieber. Stand him up. Again, posturing up, putting her weight down on Charmaine 
uh, in, in the top half. Uh, holding her down, limiting that striking ability, and, and trying to, to work from that position. Would you look at the, at the powerful legs of, of Adrian Siebert when she was up, and they are going to call her up uh, to a neutral position. So, again, this is advantage, Charmaine Tweet, but if you're not being busy enough on the ground, this is what's going to happen. A little bit surprised he stood them up there. It felt like Adrian Sieber was, was landing strikes. And again, right back into the takedown. And you can see, Jeremy, that welt on the leg of Adrian Sieber, now even bigger just above the knee uh, from a, a second round of damage. And uh, that power base isn't going to be there, but those takedowns do score points with the judges. And now she'll have to continue to work here, knowing that uh, referee Mark Aparicio not hesitate to stand them up. Well, and it's just a question of you got to keep the action going, and that's their, the officials are designed to do that. That's what their job is. Uh, and he, I'm sure he verbally warned uh, Adrian Siebert multiple times, you got to keep busy, got to keep busy. And uh, again, from the guard, Charmaine Tweet does some damage, but again, she's on the bottom, and it can't look good to judges. Again, Adrian Siever on top here in our main event. The first ever female main event for the Hard Knocks Fighting Championship. They will stand them up again, and with a minute 35 left in round number two, Charmaine Tweet's gonna have to score some points here with the judges after two consecutive takedowns. And, and it looks like a third one is on its way, and it is another nice takedown. Adrian Siever just pushing through Charmaine Tweet and, and not taking no for an answer, but Tweet might have a guillotine here. Uh, it would be an arm in guillotine if she has it, but that, that arm may be under the chin. And Tweet now pressing, trying to get, and Siever doing a good job to muscle out. Especially since Charmaine Tweet had that body triangle, so it wasn't getting anything going. There wasn't going to be a grip broken there. Well, and, and we talk about this a lot in the Hard Knocks Fighting Championship when we see fighters with a significant height and reach advantage is that, yes, you've got the height and reach advantage, but your opponent has the advantage of having that much more weight in a much smaller package. So you're allowed to have more muscle mass. You're allowed to, uh, when it does get to the ground, it's harder for them to push them off because they're, they're, they've got to push more off in a smaller package. Yeah. And it looks like he's calling them up again. Now you look, you look at the corner, and the corner of Adrian Sieber is is the first couple they were okay. This one they're quite upset because they thought that Adrian was still doing some damage on the ground, and I agree. But uh, Mark Aparicio is the one in there, and he's making the decision to stand them up to keep the fight going. And a big shot landed by Adrian Sieber. I think she's surprised that she landed that shot. Well, a big shot to end round number two to put an exclamation point on what, again, on the judges' scorecard has to go to, to Adrian Sieber. She's, she was dominant with takedowns. She, she controlled the fight. Uh, and while she may have been stood up three times, she still was the dominant fighter in that round. Uh, Charmaine Tweet's going to have to finish her off if, if, she wants to, if she wants to get a win here tonight. No, and moved to two and two. Yeah, if you look at uh, Mark Aparicio went over and talked to uh, talked to Adrian Sieber to discuss why it is that she was that being stood up, and as he was describing it, she said, "Yeah, absolutely, I understand." Uh, so uh, maybe she feels again that that maybe she feels that she should have been stood up. So um, it's going to be tough here. I, I scored two rounds to zero for Adrian Sieber right now, so Charmaine Tweet's going to really have to come out. And uh, you can tell that's what Ron Gonzalez is telling her right now. Yeah, Gonzalez in the corner of the tweet, uh, uh, emphasizing you got to stand, you got to strike, you got to avoid that takedown. And when she bull rushes at you, sidestep, whizzer, whatever you need to do to, to keep uh, to keep her from securing the takedown. And uh, just got a better look, by the way, on the replay there of that big uh, uh, that big punch thrown by Sieber at the end of the round, connected with Char's shoulder. And, uh, and not her face, even though her face Sounded went back. Good. Sounded good from here, but uh, that again, that height advantage taking into account uh, in favor of Charmaine Tweet. It's the jaw on any regular height girl. Well, she's got, use the head to set up the legs. Let's go. 
So again, a more cautious game plan here in round number three by Adrian Sieber and, and her corner may be telling her uh, that they think she's up two rounds to nothing and, and not to necessarily engage and allow Charmaine that knockout punch. But again, securing a single leg takedown now and, and trying the guillotine and now has the back to Charmaine Tweet. And Charmaine, after spending two rounds being dominated on the ground, now doing a little bit of it on her own. And uh, we'll see whether or not Adrian Sieber can turn into this and get out of it. But now she's given up her back. And Charmaine Tweet with those long limbs is not going to give it up too easily. Yeah, she's a little bit high right now, so she needs to watch her position. But she does have both hooks in, so it's going to be difficult for uh, Sieber to come on top. But she's going to be able to sneak out the back and uh, ends up on top. And, and Charmaine Tweet needs to immediately push herself off the cage. She cannot remain down here. She needs to be pushing herself up right away. Yeah, with three and a half minutes remaining in the third and final round of our main event here for the School of Hard Knocks 25, a presentation of the Hard Knocks Fighting Championship coming to you live from the Cypress Center in Medicine Hat, Alberta, and it's Adrian Sieber with two rounds of a round game dominance over Charmaine Tweet and continuing to do so here in round number three after she popped up. But Tweet again going for that choke, trying to secure it, has the one arm under. It's whether or not she can secure it with the other arm and, and get the pressure on the neck of Adrian Sieber, who again pops out loose here and uh, winds up in a, in a dominant position against Charmaine Tweet. Yeah, and again, Sieber is staying busy. That's the important part that she doesn't want to get called up. She wants to stay down here. She's figured out that Charmaine doesn't necessarily have the ability to get off her back uh, with her on top of her. So uh, she's making sure to stay busy so the uh, referee doesn't have an opportunity to call them standing. And now is passed into the half guard. And uh, more of it now, a, a rubber guard attempted briefly there by Charmaine Tweet, but she abandons that. And now is back into full guard. Quick the inside, quick inside. Well, coach is in the corner of Adrian Sieber, making sure to tell again. her to keep both her arms in. Uh, we discussed that earlier. Knees to your elbows, that keeps both your arms safe, uh, keeps you away from triangles, which at this point in a fight is, is the move that is going to be used because, again, the, the bodies get sweaty and it's able to uh, slip out. Adrian Sieber still on top here in round number three, as she was for the better parts of rounds number one and two, and postures up and tries to land a strike. But again, Tweet doing a very good job using her long limbs to keep uh, Sieber from really landing any damaging strikes, but she doesn't need to land damaging strikes as long as she remains in a dominant position, Jeremy. Yeah, and Charmaine Tweet needs to adjust her game plan. She can't just defend here. She has to feel that uh, she's not winning this fight. Uh, I don't see how she can be in th that range. So she's got to be attempting things. And uh, she's not as active as I would like. And I think she's uh, hoping that the official will be standing her up. But give credit to Adrian Sieber for remaining busy on the top. Continuing to move forward. One minute left now in our main event as Adrian Sieber continues to be in a dominant position on Charmaine Tweet. And Charmaine's gonna have to look for a submission here really quickly if she wants to finish it, and she won't get that chance. Now it's gotta be knockout or nothing as the referee stands them up with 40 seconds to go. And this may turn into a slugfest here in the last couple seconds as Adrian Sieber shoots for the takedown. Charmaine Tweet obviously looking for the knockout blow, throws the knee, and Sieber gets her up against the cage and will be looking to secure another takedown here. Tweet's got to create some distance if she wants to get a knockout and she's going to have to do that in a hurry with just 15 seconds left in our main event. Yeah, Sieber's in no rush to take her down. That's where she can be tapped out. There's no danger being tapped out in a standing position, so I'm just going to push you up against the cage and secure my victory. Uh, great game plan here by Adrian Sieber and uh, looks like she's going to win this one. I would give it three rounds to zero and uh, uh, she can take a lot from this. And Charmaine Tweet, uh, definitely gonna have to go and work on that jujitsu to be able to get off her back uh, when put down there. Every fighter ends on their back and Charmaine Tweet just needs to maybe work a little bit of the jujitsu on that as well. So as we wait the official decision, definitely want to uh, let you know that 
you can find out all the information about the Hard Knocks Fighting Championship, www.hardknocksfighting.com. You can follow us on Twitter at HK Fighting. Uh, of course, Ryan and myself, Ryan is at Podcaster Ryan, and I am at Real Ginger Ninja. Feel free to follow us along uh, for all your information as we look at the replay here. Big knee by Charmaine Tweet, and uh, this is just uh, the end of the fight here as Adrian Sieber pushes her into the corner and uh, has to, at this point, feel that she's won, takes a little bit of damage, but uh, three rounds to zero is the way I've scored it. We'll see if the judges agree. The official decision is in. Ladies Here's Jaden Ant. The official decision brought to you by Gaza Pub and d, &D Oil Field Services. We have a split decision this evening. Judge Peterson scores it 30, 27, Seaver. Lions scores it 29, 28, Tweet. And for the winner, 29, 28, in the blue corner, Adrian Sieber! So winner by split decision is Adrian Sieber. Two and two is the Adrian will out here into the center of the cage. A split decision victory. You move to two and two. Now to fill everybody out there in, a 15-year member of the Chicago Police Department it looked like the takedown, and then it looked like you were fighting the instinct to reach for cuffs as you put one arm behind her back. I have to say she's probably tougher than most of the people I've cuffed. <laughs> tougher than most of the people you've cuffed. I'm sure she'll take that as a compliment. Uh, three rounds, you, you, you took her down in every round, you, you worked your ground game. Uh, and we're just looking like you, you tried to get the ground and pound working, but you couldn't find it. Yeah, her legs are very long. Um, every time I try to move in to get a good ground and pound position, her legs were moving me back. So um, that, was, that was difficult. <laughs> so two and two now. Uh, what's, what's the plan for the future? Are we going to see you back here in the Hard Knocks cage again? <laughs> After 22 hours to get here, uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm really thankful for Hard Knocks for bringing me up here. They've been totally awesome uh, and uh, just very accommodating. So thank you to them. And I'm sure you got sponsors and coaches to thank. I, I want to thank God. Um, I don't know. A lot of people don't know. I'm coming off of an orbital fracture. And I didn't know if I could fight again. So this is really meaningful to me. <laughs> All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it one more time for your main event winner, Adrian Sieber. To find out more about Hard Knocks Fighting and upcoming Hard Knocks events, please visit hardknocksfighting.com. In the Rig Pig Apparel Blue Corner, he's 2-0 as a professional, 32 years old, and stands 5 feet, 9 inches tall. He weighed in at 153 and 1 half pounds, fighting out of Axis Jiu-Jitsu Canada from Kamloops. Please welcome Hard Knocks fighter, Julia! the Flamin's Fitness Red Corner. He's four and six as a professional, 24 years old and stands five feet, seven inches tall. He weighed in at 156 pounds, fighting out of dynamic MMA from Calgary. Please welcome Hard Knocks fighter, Dia Puff Daddy. This belt will be contested under professional rules. The referee in charge of the Hard Knocks action is Mr. Brian Beauchamp. Gentlemen, bring it in. Hey, we went over the instructions now in the back room. I want a clean, fair fight. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my command at all times. Let's touch gloves and make it official. So who's in the blue corner? 
in the black trunks and the red trunks red corner for Dia Grant as we get set for our second last fight of the night. Main event up next. And it's Dia Grant setting the early pace and throwing some early strikes. Julius Hughes a little bit back on his heels there up against the cage. Dia Grant throwing strikes early and often. Jerry. Good straight, good straight strikes and a little bit of a slip there. Maybe the uh, cleanup uh, hasn't dried completely from the blood from the previous fight. But uh, uh, who's taking uh, some great shots early and Dia Grant uh, clinical boxing. Yeah, a little bit of dirty boxing up uh, against the cage. Dia said he was working on his striking for this fight, thinking that uh, that might be an advantage for him. Again, getting the report from Matt Krako that Dia might not want to go to the ground with Hughes, or Hughes. And now who's pushing up him up against the, uh, against the cage? Remember, cage control, very important here. Uh, we do have an award for it. $500 going towards the fighter if it's a pro fight, or towards the club if it's an amateur fighter. Who's trying to battle his way off the cage. Grant doing a good job of holding him up against, but now Who's has reversed the situation and has him up against the cage here right in front of us. Up close to personal MMA. Yes, best seats in the house. Who's has Grant up against the cage. Not doing much work though here from this position. You, you know that uh, this, this position, again, it doesn't look like much is happening, but Randy Couture made a career off of this. He would push guys up against the cage and wear them out. Uh, just, you have to hold all my body weight. And uh, that's what he would do, and uh, guys would get tired, and he'd kill them with conditioning. Uh, fighters are broken up, though, and back to the center, and we'll see if the boxing will come back from Dia Grant. Again, throws the jab out. Julius trying to get inside, looking for that takedown. Big head kick there from Grant, just ducking under it. Zeus. Those jabs keep landing from Dia Grant. As, Good kick there. As Hoos is trying to get inside, trying to secure the takedown with just under three minutes remaining. And he does take him down, but ends up on the wrong end of it as Dia Grant's on top. And Dia Grant quickly trying to pass to be able to uh, keep working his striking. Uh, kind of in a half guard here, trying to get through and uh, landing some good shots. Who's posturing up quite high though? That's uh, good. It's going to be able to protect your face, uh, but it does leave the head open. And if you can see on the right hand side of Who's his head, he's got a nice little mouse growing there. I don't know if it's a nice mouse, but it's there. Dia Grant on top of Julius Hoos here with just over two minutes remaining in round number one of our co-main event of the evening. And Dia Grant looking really sharp here in the early going, Jeremy. Probably the best I've seen him yet. No, absolutely. Uh, Dia Grant, uh, very clinical striking, good takedown defense, good body positioning, and now not rushing things, just doing his damage while he's got uh, Hoos on his back. And a couple nice elbows from the top that got through as well. Grant doing a, a very good job in a dominant position here towards the end of round one. Good posture up here by Grant and then coming down with a heavy elbow, it doesn't hit in the head, but again in the body uh, is uh, good enough to do some damage and it's a, it's a fight that's gonna last uh, it's a fight that's going to last 15 minutes, so anything you could take away is going to be benefiting you later. And some nice strikes from the bottom as well from Julius Hughes. Yeah, Hughes landing some elbows as well as some punches from the bottom. But so far, so good for Dia Grant here in round number one. Big shot there. Big right hand. Another right falls through. Hughes is in trouble here on the ground as Dia Grant imposing his will. This now his third fight under the Dynamic banner was not with Dynamic now and said that every day he trains at Dynamic, he gets better and better and he's certainly proving that here as this is the best we've seen him yet. Well, and it helps to have great training partners like they do have at Dynamic and they do have some specialists that come in there and do some uh, coaching with them, some specialist wrestlers. Uh, and Max Marin again, one of those guys that teaches all aspects of Jiu-Jitsu game, or of all aspects of MMA game, pardon me. 
Julius trying to grab an arm on Dio with just under 10 seconds remaining here in round number one. Blood coming from a lower body part of one of the fighters. Uh, it might be coming from Dia Grant's foot. Well, it's collected there, but it might be coming from the face of Julius Hughes and it, Hughes, pardon, and just uh, he happened to step in it. Don't know where that blood's coming from, but they get uh, three five-minute rounds and then one minute in between. Of course, our amateurs early on were three threes with a minute and a half and in between. And referee Brian Beauchamp calling in the doctor to come and take a look at the face of Julius Hughes. You can see here as Hoos tries to land some strikes from the bottom, but Dia Grant doing an excellent job of posturing up and landing that right hand, mixing it up with the left. A very good round for Dia Grant, who is looking to get closer and closer to that 500 mark on his pro career. And, and it was a fantastic round by Dia Grant, and uh, I talk about energy systems being important. Dia Grant's a big, muscular guy, so, uh, He's not shown any difficulty being able to last for the whole fight uh, in the past. And, uh, but Julius Hughes, uh, or sorry, Julius Hughes, pardon, has a, he's able to go the fight the whole distance. He's, he's one of those guys that has unending stamina. And uh, we'll see if that starts to uh, play out as the fight goes on. So Grant continuing to go forward. That left jab has landed all fight long and continues to do so here in the early going of round number two. And Grant with a nice reversal as Julius Hughes was trying to get him up to the cage. And still some blood coming from Julius Hughes. And it's collecting on the shoulder. It's coming from the nose, coming from the eye. And uh, using his head now just to push in to maybe grind out a little bit more, uh, more blood. A little sandpaper from Dia Grant on the wounds of Julius Hughes. And a nice right hand, and Dia Grant comes out swinging. And he is putting together his most dominant performance in the Hard Knocks cage to date, as he has absolutely demolished the face of Julius Hughes. Yeah, I, I didn't expect this from, from Grant, uh, his last fight. Uh, he looked like he slowed down a little bit, but wow, he's, he, like you said, this is the best thing, best we've seen him in a long time, and he's really dominating Hoos right now. Hoos has him up against the cage, though, and, and like we've said before, MMA can turn on a dime, and it may just be a matter of who's finding his other gear, but right now, bleeding profusely, Julius Hoos up against the cage trying to hold Dia Grant up. And uh, Brian Beauchamp, no stranger to letting these guys fight, but also has already restarted them on the cage once with who's in a dominant position because there wasn't enough action. And who's trying for the takedown now. The thing is, is he can't just take him backwards. Dia Grant's a very athletic guy. He's able to hop. You gotta go side to side when you're taking somebody down. He needs to switch to the single right now, drop down and then chest pressure. That will bring the takedown, but he's looking to sneak in behind. And again, standing them up is the referee. Julius Hughes' face is a mess, and we're gonna get that cleaned up. Moved off to opposite corners. No, my mistake, just wanted to set them to their proper corners before restarting. Another hand slips in behind the defenses of Julius Hughes. Dia Grant is putting on a boxing clinic in addition to everything else he's doing uh, right in this fight which is pretty much everything. I, there's not much he's doing that's wrong in this fight right now. Well, Ari Tobe told me earlier tonight he's looking at doing a tournament at 155 because he thought he had so many talented 155 fighters. These two are among them, and uh, he's looking to do a, a tournament for a championship at the 155 level. Uh, I'm sure these, both of these men will be involved if that is the case. But so far, uh, Julius Hughes unable to make anything of getting Dia Grant up against the cage. And Grant, quick after the takedown, to jump on top of Hughes again. Yeah, it's, it's two times that Grant has taken Hughes's takedown away from him and uh, able to get on top. And now he's got his back looking to sink it in. It's deep, but uh, we'll see if Hughes is able to fight this off. Dia Grant with the rear naked choke. There's the tap. This fight is over. Dia Grant. Gets Put revenge. On a dominant performance and avenges his gym against Julius Hughes.
A great performance by Dia Grant. It looks like he was schooled specifically on what he needed to do in this fight, and he came out and did it. Uh, you look at Julius Hoos' face. Uh, A the, special the, thank you goes out to Canadian Digital for providing our new digital screens for our next event. Thank you to Canadian Digital. And we watch a replay here of the end of the fight. Uh, you look at him pouncing is Dia Grant, and as he's pouncing, he fires that right arm in there and was able to sink in that rear naked choke. Who's fought it off as long as he could, but uh, nice tight squeeze by Dia Grant. Great fight, a great game plan, and he executed it perfectly. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a new Dia Grant, and I'm looking forward to seeing as he continues on. And uh, showing to the crowd his support. He's a hometown boy, and uh, you look at the face of Julius Hoos, he's got a mouse under the right eye, a mouse under the left eye, he's bleeding all over, and wow. Great Ladies fight here, we're going to the official, we decision the official decision in the center with Jaden Nance. Brought to you by Rig Pig Apparel. The winner by tap out due to rear naked choke at three minutes and 22 seconds in the second round, in the red corner, Dia 